Now we want to bring in Dr. Jane Morgan, the Executive Director of Health at Piedmont Healthcare here in Atlanta. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So uh, we have the teams, uh, mm -hmm. any type of team, football teams, youth soccer team, you name it. They practice uh, earlier on or maybe even in the evenings to avoid the heat, but sometimes okay. that doesn't even work. So at what temperature do people start to get heat exhaustion? And so really is temperature independent it, and the heat index is really important because it determines really how thick the air is and how much heat the body and the atmosphere are holding. While we're in this heat wave and really as the earth and climate is heating up, we really have to take closer and closer attention to this, especially to something called the urban heat index, the UHI, which means that if you are practicing in areas uh, that are in cities where there's more asphalt, uh, around you, the temperature may actually be two to six degrees higher. And those coaches need to even keep a closer eye on their players. And doctor, you know, the college teams have all the, the entire staff, mm -hmm. but you talk about the peewee leagues, the, the high schools, they don't have all the trainers to kind of monitor all the players and right. different specialties as well. So what should the, the high school coaches, the peewee coaches be looking for in terms of players in terms of showing signs of, hey, you might have a heat illness. Mm -hmm. Even more vigilance because the younger the player is, the less awareness actually they may have and the, and the less information. And so a couple of things. We really want to have a buddy system and then also train the players to look out for each other. It's almost the same as a heart attack. Know the signs of a heart attack and you can save someone. We need to make certain the players are empowered to know what to look for in this environment, in this atmosphere with each other and have a buddy system. Other than that, parents must be involved. Make certain you are sending water and also cool cloths that your children can soak in ice or in cold water, ice water while they're there and continue to cool themselves. Put in those cloths on their necks, in their armpits, in their groins, and hydrate, 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 especially with the electrolytes. The coaches need to make certain they're shaded areas and then because the children are younger, direct them to the shaded area. It is now time for everyone to go into the shade and have some misting. So all of that means as you get to those younger and younger players with less and less resources, we need more of the village to come together and make certain people are safe. Well, you talked a little bit about mitigation and some of the heat illnesses, but say someone is suffering from a heat illness, mm -hmm. there's one very cheap way to help people out, and that's an ice bath. Mm -hmm. not, not all high schools have right. them. Um, you know, and some people, they tend to say, okay, well, wouldn't that make someone to go into shock mm -hmm. if you put them in an ice bath? Mm -hmm. Talk about how that can help so much when it comes to a heat illness. Yeah, an ice bath is the quickest way to cool down your core temperatures. Why is that important? Because in the core is where we're housing all of our organs, and that's really what's keeping us alive. It's not our arms and our legs, it's our organs. Um, our arms and legs are helping us move around, but we've got to keep those organs. The, you know, the, the risk, and it's a smaller risk, is that if your body is cooled too quickly, you can go into shock. But we do want to be able to cool the body down, and that is the most effective way if you have it, to be completely submerged in an ice bath. Because this really is a, a medical emergency, especially if someone is already demonstrating confusion or delirium. Um, you know, certainly having a seizure, you, you want to call 911, but then you want to start to do things while you wait for the medical team to arrive. And how often should players be taking water breaks mm. and, and how much water should mm. they be drinking? Great question. Tons of water, often, often, often. Mm -hmm. So generally about every 15 minutes. Right. They say 10 to 20 minutes. I'm just not going to even give a range. I'm going to say 15 minutes. Let's everybody have a number. Mm -hmm. Every 15 minutes, make sure your players are hydrating, including those who may not be on the practice field, who are standing on the side waiting their turn to come in. They also have to go into the shade and hydrate. This is an entire team, not just the people who are on the field at that time. Make sure you're keeping an eye even on the players who are not participating as much or not participating at that time. Wonderful. Great information, Dr. Jane Morgan with Piedmont Healthcare. Thanks for joining us. And I like Thank the fact you. that the ice bath, I mm -hmm. mean, something that costs maybe dollars a day can save lives. Three high school kids a year on average die just from the heat. That's, that's saved lives. Yeah. yeah. And simple. something as simple as an, as an ice bath, just having that nearby, even if you don't have to use it, it's just that safety net. Yeah. And some high school associations mandate it. Mm -hmm. Many do not. Many in the South don't, so it just doesn't make sense. Where we're hot. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Right. It doesn't make sense. Thank you so much for joining us. Being